when you go the last time you you know threw a pass against 11 defenders uh, with shoulder pads on was August or April 13th you got to go I mean that's why the pros practice too I mean you know Tom Brady has been doing this a long time he still goes to practice and, and gets his reps in so uh, but we do got to make sure that that Casey and Roshan get quality reps as well. Coach, the, saying, the saying goes, coach-led teams are good, but player-led teams in times. How close do you think this program is to being a player-led team? Close. I, I, I do. I, um, I'm not ready to stamp it just yet, but I, I think it's as close as we've been since we've been here, uh, for sure. And um, a, a big reason is those five guys sitting next to me uh, they're they're elite leaders. Uh, I mean, elite, all of them. Uh, and there's a few more on my my leadership council too that are are pretty damn good. And so, um, you know, when when someone has a moment of weakness and, and doesn't toe the line or do something to our standard, um, when a teammate beats a coach to the discipline or to the to the um, scolding, if you will, that's that's pretty cool, and and that happens quite a bit with this team. And um, you know, that's not to say that we, as coaches, we've got our feet propped up and we're just let them take the ball and run with it. Um, you know, we, we still got a job to do as well, and that's to, to make sure that um, you know that that everything is running smoothly. But um, you know, I. I I coach the heck out of these guys and the other few guys on my leadership council, and then that message gets disseminated. Excuse me, throughout the team. I don't know anything about it. I mean, I, I know he's a good coach. We played him uh, in the Peach Bowl when I was at Houston, and he was at Florida State. But I, I couldn't, I couldn't even tell you the the record. Uh, last year, I think they, I think they did well and, and played in a, a bowl game. Oh, he's he's great. I mean, you know, he's bringing a, another national championship to to the conference. Um, uh, you know, he's he's got a lot of pelts on the wall. That's for sure. Um, and uh, you know, he's he's fun to be around in our head coaches meetings in April. Uh, he was quite vocal and, and had some strong opinions. And everybody, li- he's like E.F. Hutton, right? When when Coach Miles talks, people listen because of the respect that we have for him. And, um, you know, the uh, again, the, the pelts on the wall that he has as a head coach. Coach, you mentioned expanding your arsenal of RPOs a few times this offseason. What's been kind of a guiding, a guiding light for you guys in, in, in looking to expand that? Well, I, I think, you know, the beauty of, an, of the RPO is instead of, you know, what I grew up learning, you know, spread, zone, read, it was a run-run option, right? And um, which obviously exposed your quarterback a little bit more than uh, when, when he did keep the football, uh, where now it's a run-pass option. Uh, so if the defense does something to make you – pull the ball out of the running back's belly it's not the quarterback running with it anymore it's a quarterback throwing it so it's uh, a way to get more yards because th- those throws are a little bit farther down down the field that's why they have to be out so quick because the O-line is only allowed to be three yards down the field when the ball is out um, but I, I think the, we we made it a priority to, to try to take um some of those hits off of off of Sam. I think in an ideal world, you know, um, obviously Sam's going to scramble, right? I mean, so you can't av- you can't avoid that. I mean, there's going to be times when he's pressured on a pass play and he's going to scramble, um, and then there's going to be times when we call his number on on fourth and one. Hey, go get us a ball. But if we can eliminate the the times that he's actually keeping it on a on a read scheme. Um, then that's, you know, two to five tackles a game, uh, you know, that, that were, were taken off of his body. So, some people may see the carries against, maybe the yards per carry numbers are always high because of short yardage, but how much 
how huge is it for your offense that you can run RPOs or whatever between the 20s, but when you get into those, those tough yardage like that Alabama struggled to get against Clemson with the RPO game, that LA area is a good place. Yeah, the, the, him running the football is never going to leave our offense. Um, that's, he's just he's too good at it, and um, and he, he's he's too tough. Um, but you, you're you're right. I, I do think you know the as the field condenses in the red zone, you need some different answers other than than RPOs, and uh, that's where then maybe your read game comes in, your called quarterback runs, or your uh, you know, again, we, we would like to hand the ball. We'd like to think that we're good enough up front that we can get some movement and make four yards, um, you know, with our tailbacks in, inside the red zone even. Coach, what have you seen from – Hang on. You go, no, you, you go ahead. What have you seen from Collins since the NFL draft decision come back was behind him now that you know, Jordan is gone and, and, and most eyes are on him even though he had a really productive year last year? What have you seen from him in terms of taking that now? Yeah, how crazy was this league in terms of depth at receiver when Colin Johnson can't even make honorable mention uh, after the season he had? I mean, that's mind-boggling. Uh, but, um, no, I, this is a guy that works his tail off, man. I mean, he is constantly um, trying to get better at his craft and hone his craft. I, I know... You know, they, they, our, our players had off uh, the week of 4th of July from their summer workouts. And I look on the Internet and there's Colin getting a workout in on his own, you know, and it's just that's the kind of guy he is. He's, he's going to constantly be working. And, um, you know, I think, you know, he's pretty banged up there uh, towards the end of the year, missed a couple games and played hurt uh, towards the end of the year, but still um, you know, says a lot about his toughness that, you know, he had a torn meniscus. You know, let the swelling go down and still play three or four games, and and then have the surgery after the bowl game. Um, so he's tough as nails, but I I think you know he he's really come a long way um, from his sophomore year when we got here. Uh, he was he was always tall, but he wasn't near as physically imposing as he is right now. He got pushed around a lot. And now he's imposing his will. He's confident in his strength. You know, he's worked really hard in the weight room with Coach McKnight. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, uh, what have I seen? I've, I've seen a guy that, you know, if if he stays healthy and people don't double-team him every every snap, then he, he's going to have a, a fantastic season. Tom, how has Sam evolved not only as a player but as a leader? She's the first time you've met him. Uh, well, uh, like has been asked, um, just his, I think he's taking the next step. I think he's, he, last year he was really good at leading the offense, where this year he's, you know, crossed the line over into to leading the, the defense as well, or, or at least, you know, being a presence over there from a leadership standpoint. So, um, that, that's probably the biggest step that I've seen, and, and yeah, I'm really proud of, of him and and his ability to continue to improve. Um, Coaching. Uh, obviously, your, your quarterback had declared that you guys were back uh, on that Sugar Bowl pool. I know, your heart dropped. Um, you think? <laughs> in your opinion, when you go to a Big 12 championship and you win a major bowl, does that mean Texas is back? I, I, I've never been able to answer that question because I don't know what the definition of back is. Um, so I, I do know this. We, we will. The expectations within our program will always exceed any external expectations that anybody else has for us. Um, and so, what that word means, I, I, I don't know. I, but I do know. I get where that came from for Sam because. Um, considering his uh, relationship with this university and you know both his parents being alums and him growing up in Austin and literally dreaming uh, of being the starting quarterback at the University of Texas um, it was very personal for him um, to be the guy to, to lead the, 
the resurrection of, of this program to to be the guy to um, lead this this next generation uh, of this program and so um, shoot the guy played his tail tail off he scored three touchdowns he threw a two point conversion he was the MVP I'll cut him some slack for saying two words right but um, two two big words yeah but. <laughs> Um, if there's anybody that's earned it, it's, it's him. Um, but I'll never know what that phrase means. I'll never know what the definition is. But, but I do. the one thing I do know is it's very personal for him to be a part of um, this era of Texas football. And not just a part of it, but, but a, a main reason for it. Your stated goal, even from the day he was hired, was you want Texas to compete for championships. That's correct. So... Texas wasn't able to compete for championships prior to you. So does that kind of, for you, does it mean it's kind of headed in the right direction? Because that was your stated goal for you, what you have for the program. Yeah, and and maybe um, a better way to explain it is we'll never um, use that phrase in our program because there's a finality to it, right? There's an end to it. I like what you said better. We're on the right track, right? We're constantly improving. We'll never arrive at being back. We will always be pushing to improve. Uh, now, where that ceiling takes us, I don't know. Um, but we're never going to put a finality on our goals to say, hey, we've arrived. That, that's, that's foolish. Um, so maybe that's why I don't understand the, the, the definition of it, because it it does have a, a finality to it and um but uh, yeah I, I i do know i know that we're on the right track absolutely now what that means and in, in wins and losses from year to year i don't know but um we were brought in to rebuild a program not just one season or here and there you know this is a program that needs to be able to sustain success and and that takes time Things right for like a little term. Like Brandon's talking about how he drinks water bottles to pass the pee test. You know, going back to things that are day one type of things. Right? And do, you, do you drill down on that? Like, uh, we haven't stopped. Right, yeah. I mean, we always have. Right. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, what's uh, Coach McKnight says, you know, he's like a brick wall. You can keep banging your head against it, but you're the one that's going to get bloody. <laughs> you know, and um, you know that's kind of kind of how we are. This is this is what we do around here, and um, we don't take days off. It's fourth and inches every time you walk in the doors of that building, and um, there's no almost. You know, there's well, I was almost hydrated. That means you were dehydrated, right? We we live in a um, in a zero sum business. Right there, there's no, you know, it's it's like sales. Well, I almost made my quota. Guess what that means? You yeah. didn't make your quota. You know, well, I we almost won the game, or we should have won the game. You know what that means? You didn't win the game. You know, so I mean, it's literally in everything we do, it's very evaluation friendly. You either did it or you didn't. Right? It's either plus or minus. That's it. There's no, as Coach Brown used to say, there's no partially pregnant. It, it doesn't exist, and so, um, and it is exhausting as coaches um, to be that thorough on your details and um, consistent with your follow through of them. Um, but it is also necessary. It's it's why there's. There's only one national champion at the at the end of the season, and why there, there's only been a few in the past decade. So, um, coach in the offseason. Spoke season. earlier about your defense, two yeah. inexperienced corners, obviously with Cook and Green, and then your Mac back, Mac Black. Who, who Cook and Green? Who you just automatically made them the starters? No, no, no. I'm just saying those guys, are the two guys, for the, for the springtime. What about Mike back? The inside back. You mentioned something about. Deshaun Jameson and Kobe Boyce were there too in the springtime. I saw them too. I saw okay. Them too. They got a shot too. Yes. <laughs> I would imagine. They got a shot. I would imagine. 
Oh, but what about Mike back? I know that's such an important spot there at Mac. You know, you know, you know the stuff that happened with like Gabriel Floyd. I know that was a guy you like, wanted to lean on. Caleb Johnson coming in, Juan Mitchell. What do you kind of, Delhi kind of, kind of fits that mold? What are you looking at? Man? Yeah, I, I think, you know, as it stands right now, um, Delhi and Caleb uh, would, would, would be fighting for that job. Uh, and then depending on the personnel, again, that goes back into getting the best 11 on the field. Um, if we wanted to add, if, if neither of them um, were productive enough uh, to, to stay in that role, then, and we wanted to put another safety on the field, then that would move Jeff to Mac uh, and Joe Osai to, to Rover and, and put another safety on the field. I didn't get to mention the other corner that came in. Did Kenyatta Watson the second come in as prepared as you've seen at the cornerback from on campus? Well, you've got some good intel. Uh, yes. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think back in all my years. I'm, I'm sure there's been some that have, that have matched it. But, yeah, he's, uh, you know, the, the thing about him that, that was, you know, we, obviously he, he's – his dad being a coach and 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 the, the way the kid was raised, a two parent home, and all all of the intangibles were there. He had the length. Um, you know, I was pleasantly surprised with how well he tested um, in terms of his forty and shuttle and vertical jump and uh, you know outside of Tyler Owens and uh, Jake Smith. You know, he was. He was a close third um, behind those guys from the uh, measurable standpoint. So, yeah, he, he was very prepared. Coach, in the offseason, there's always a lot of talk about uh, programs and their ability to send guys to the NFL, how many draft picks they have. How important is that for recruits, like, right now? Is it is it increasing, uh, and how often does that come up in the recruiting process? Uh, it comes up a lot. Um, you know, we're, we're very proud of, of our guys that got drafted this year and those that that um, that signed as, as priority free agents. Um, but there, there, there's no debate that, that Texas, um, we've got to do more. And that, that there's a lot of factors that factor into that. One is recruiting um, and recruiting talent, but the right talent, too, that, that's going to work and, and want to be developed. Uh, two, that's development by, by us. And three, that's the, the one, two drive and desire of, of the young man. And, um, you know, when, whenever it does come up, I mean, my, my standard answer to any student athlete um, or, or any parent is, listen, let, let's, let's not blame our staff for the last decade of, of Texas football before we got there. That's not fair. You know, we, um, I, I, we take a lot of pride in what we've done in a very short period of time when it comes to development. You know, we're the conference defensive player of the year uh, at linebacker with, with one year under Todd Orlando. Um, after, uh, I believe, his sophomore year, he wasn't even a full-time starter, you know, and... Uh, you know, Charles Amenahue worked his tail off uh, in our program and went from a role player to a starter as a junior to the defensive lineman of the year uh, in our conference. And so the development's there. Um, we, we've got to recruit and continue to recruit the right kind of guys um, that have the, the measurables, the tangibles, um, to be high round draft picks, and and I, I think we're we're doing a pretty good job of that thus far. Tom, uh, earlier today, you heard Mr. Marcus kind of talk about the shirt and said, "Hey, you all more physical, responsible." It does. Um, I, I think we tell people all the time. What are you most excited for for this upcoming season? What are you most excited for for this upcoming season? Oh yeah, just being able to get out to the game.
Vince Young talked at all? Yeah, he, Vince comes around all the time. He's, he's always he, he's made it very clear that he's always available to me if I ever have any questions about anything. Has he, have you talked to him about what it's kind of like to be almost a symbol of a football program and institution? No, no, I haven't talked to him about that. He's giving you any advice about like how to handle this question. Uh, I think I mean every guy that I've talked to. It's, Played here, and you can always help them, offers their advice about what it takes and just to have a little bit of and focus on what I can do. It's the most profound piece of advice you've got. Uh, probably from Colt, just to understand that the outside noise doesn't affect anything um, in your progression and your production on the field. So, why would you let it be so in your mind space? What about being a Texas quarterback has been the thing that maybe surprised you the most or just didn't think it was part of it even though you were around it? I would say just how much everything you say just kind of travels in you and it can be taken in completely different directions than what you want. Um, and whether that be just with like a little kid that you had no idea you were going to play such an impact on his life just because it was something that you just telling him, or maybe that's a tweet that blows up, and you're like, oh, yeah. in high school, you could just tweet that and get like three favorites. And, oh, right. <laughs> um, so I think the spotlight and understanding that um, there's always there's always eyes and attention on you. How long does it take to understand that spotlight? Uh, I think it it takes a uh, kind of I think it honestly. It's the experience. Like you have to kind of experience to understand what it what it entails. You can be prepared for it as much as you want, but until you experience it and experience what it's like to have hype and experience what it's like to have hate, then you can't you can't really prepare for it. If that makes sense. Hey, Malcolm, how's it going? Uh, hey. Hey. So, you know, you've. You come in obviously with a lot of playing experience, but you guys lose a lot of leadership on defense. So, like outside of yourself, who are some of those other guys that have that you see stepping up and becoming the new leaders to fill like Gary Johnson and Anthony New Wheeler and uh, Brecken Hager and Charles and those guys? Uh, just like you say, like I come in with a lot of experience, but it's also a lot of other guys like that. Uh, just not me. Uh, guys like Jared Wilborn, guys like Taquan Graham, you know, they played a lot of football. Uh, also, Jeff McCullough and played a lot. We've got a secondary that's been played. We've got two freshmen back there going to a sophomore season that's been played a lot. They started almost the whole season along with Brandon Jones. So, you know, uh, it's a lot of guys that have played a lot of football on this defense. Um, probably didn't start all the time, but still play starter play, like the amount of plays that a starter will play. So, you know, uh, we're just trying to build off that. And, um, and now it's time for us to start and step up. Uh, just trying to lead this team defense in the right direction. Anything specific that you've really tried to improve in your game heading into heading into this year? Um, conditioning wise, uh, try to get better conditioning. Uh, and and uh, every day, you know, just striving to become a better pass rusher, striving to become a better run stopper. I mean, like uh, my dad told me when I was younger, you can never be too good at what you do. And so always striving for perfection, perfection, and always trying to get better at every, every, every asset of my game. Okay. If you played on the offensive line, what position would you play? On the offensive line? Yeah, if you played on the line. I would, I would play on the offensive line. <laughs> but if I play on offense, I'll play running back. Okay. <laughs> I played running back in high school, so I'll play running back. All right. You're going to get some touches in the in the red zone maybe? Oh, yeah. Maybe like Derek Loki used to yeah, or some of those know, guys? Uh, we got some up the sleeve. Cody Johnson. Yeah. To play for uh, Texas back in the day. Oh yeah. Yeah, I get a few touches down there. All right. <laughs> you have to watch out for that. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay.
Well, first of all, um, I think that your dad and I have the same name. Yeah. Uh, I always refer to you and the Kirkland as my next morning. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just not too crazy. Kirk, I know that. Kirk's camera is about two thousand dollars. He has a lens that's two thousand dollars. Actually, insane. Type of stuff. So my camera's not as good as his. I'll tell you. What. Um, there was a time where you were one of the young guys in the room, but now you're old and you're you're the old, you're the senior, you're the old guy in the room. Talk about what that entails for you and, and your mind as being the leader of that wide receiver. Man, that's something I first of all I, I just took on head first as off this off season. Yeah. Something I'm, I'm, I'm kind of proud of the way I, I did it. I'm going to continue to grow, you know, for my teammates and for my receivers because they need that. It's only me and Devin who only see uh, John Bird as well. But uh, me, me, me and Devin and John Bird. So we really have to be just we have a majority of young receiver receiver group and a young team. So. I'm the old guy now, like you said. So I just got to continue to lead. And whenever something goes wrong. God forbid we lose a game, a play goes wrong, something, you know, it's football, something's probably going to go wrong. They always will look to the leader, so they're going to see how I respond to it. So it's important that I have that awareness of mind to understand it's bigger than just me. So as a senior, what, what are some of the things you've learned you know, throughout these, these past three years, four years, and moving forward? What are the things you've learned? There's so much. You, 